It would take you over 200 years without sleeping to listen to all the music that was just released last year. The supply of music keeps exploding and the most basic principles of economics will tell you that the value of a song is constantly falling over time. So are we reaching a point where music is basically becoming worthless? Well, I think we're looking at this problem in the wrong way. For most of human history, all the value of music was in live performances. Like in the 1600s, you had the first opera and concert halls. You had people that were willing to pay to see live performances. It wasn't until 1877 that Thomas Edison came out and dropped the phonograph. That was the first piece of tech that could record and play back sound. So up until that point, there was no value in recorded music that's because recorded music didn't exist yet. All the value was in live performances. Then it wasn't until a lot later in 1948 that Columbia Records introduced the long play vinyl record. Those could hold around 45 minutes of music, so you could actually fit a full album on there. And that's when the value of recorded music really starts to take off. If you think about it, every technology since then has made it not only easier to distribute music to more people, but also a lot easier to make music too. On the distribution side, you had vinyl, then cassettes, then CDs, then MP3s, and now you have subscription-based streaming platforms. Each one of those advancements made it a lot easier to get music in the hands of more people, but at the same time, you had advancements in how people make music too. You had the invention of tape recording, and then multi-track recording, and then MIDI interfaces, and then digital audio workstations, and now there are even AI text to music models. So all of this tech has come to a point where I can type in a few words, have a computer make a song for me, and then click a few buttons to release that song onto a platform that has hundreds of millions of users. If you told someone in the 1950s that was gonna be possible, they'd think you're insane. And the stats that come along with all this new tech are crazy. Like in 1955, you had just 1,615 albums that were released in the US. Then by 1970, you had about 4,000 albums that were officially released that year. Then with the advancements in tech, you get around 30,000 albums released in 1996. And by 2008, you have 100,000 albums that were released that year. So in just a 50 year window, you had a 62 times increase in the amount of music being released, and that's just the beginning of it. Since 2008, computers have gotten cheaper, it's gotten easier to make music, and it's also gotten way easier to release and distribute music. So now instead of measuring albums per year, we measure songs per day. And at this point, the exact number is up for debate, but there are at least 100,000 songs per day being released now. And I'm no economics expert, but it's pretty clear when you have a supply curve that's just exploding and it's a man curve that stays relatively consistent that the value of that product is going to plummet over time. And I know this can seem super depressing as a musician, but we're not looking at the full picture. The value doesn't lie in the music itself. The value actually lies and the brand that the music is attached to. Let's say I have 10 house tracks and I release them under my name. Well, they're not gonna be that valuable, but let's say I take those 10 same exact tracks and release them under Fisher's name, then it's gonna be a different story. He can weave those tracks into his brand, promote them to his millions of followers, create a live concert experience around that collection of songs, sell merch, do brand partnerships. All of a sudden, those same 10 tracks are worth way more, not because of the music itself, but because of the valuable brand that Fisher has built over the years. You know, in 2023, Taylor Swift did over a billion dollars in ticket sales, her merch did over $240 million in sales, and her concert film did over $260 million in the box office. That's how powerful a strong brand can be. Her music is just one part of her brand. She's also known as a songwriter who stands up for an artist's right to control their own work. She pulled her music from Spotify at one point. She's re-recorded albums to take back control of her music. That's all part of her brand identity and the values she stands for. You also have her personality, how she interacts with fans, her online presence, the live experiences she gives people at her shows, her visual aesthetic. As the supply of this part, the music, becomes almost unlimited, then it's only natural that people are placing more and more value on this part. 
but you don't need to be Taylor Swift to take advantage of this. If you wanna make a living as an artist, you just need to realize that you should be spending as much time on your brand as your music. And if you don't wanna do that, that's fine. Music as a hobby still has a lot of personal and emotional value. Like I love making music, it makes me happy. That's not what this video is about. It's about the financial value of music. So we gotta answer the question, is music becoming worthless? Well, the financial value of a single song is clearly going down over time but the brand value of music is at the highest it's ever been and it's gonna keep going up. So music isn't actually becoming worthless, the value is just flowing out of recorded music and into the strongest brands. Thank you guys for watching, I'll catch you next time, peace.